It was neither a king's nor a queen's ransom that she had. It was a person's ransom of empty pizza boxes, filling her apartment nearly floor to ceiling. Also, she burned candles 24-7. It looked like a Catholic ritual, but simply was the way she liked it. It was among the first in my learning experience in Pittsburgh of a trust fund pizza death. It's a terrible way to go. Each one is like its own type of inquisition. Like... I have no way of knowing whether she died in her sleep of smoke inhalation or was painfully and excruciatingly burned to death because those details actually did not come out. It happened to a friend of mine and he told me about it. He'd met her at Chief's Bar on Craig Street. And they had an affair immediately. For two weeks, they enjoyed each other in her apartment, my friend living just blocks away. Convenient, convenient stores nearby to buy cigarettes at. Cigarettes were still cheap. In those days, it was the 19, early 1990s. Cigarettes were somewhat inexpensive. At the time, as beer was inexpensive, jeez. Western Psych was close to Chief's Bar, and patients like this woman whose parents had wisely placed her on a trust fund, and she, she had psychiatric care available to her, really at all times. Plus, she had poster, she had an apartment, and pizza boxes stacked to the ceiling, and she burned candles 24-7. My friend, and she had been dating carnally, romantically for two weeks when my friend went to the store to get cigarettes stopped at the bar to have a couple beers chatted with friends and what could be just a wonderful and conversational and open egalitarian working class community intersecting beautifully with individuals and the lively individuals from the upper middle class who would go slumming I liked Chief's Bar Poor Dave, the victim, who went away alive. Uh, he was from an erudite family of alcoholics that came out of New England. His people were like Cape Cod alcoholics, and for some reason he moved to Pittsburgh. I forget why. We used to talk, I remember he told me why he was in Pittsburgh. He may have been, he was visually impaired. I mean, actually, there may have been, he may have, see, it was not unusual for a one of the reasons someone with that type of background would be in Pittsburgh is because they're receiving some type of treatment in Pittsburgh's fab tabulous hospitals. Western Psych was great for all the nut jobs around there, like his new girlfriend who burned to death in an apartment fire in the two hours. It was inside of a two hour frame <coughs> in which my buddy left her apartment to get cigarettes. He talked to a friend for maybe an hour. The chief's bar returned, and the police were there, the fire, all first responders were there. He knew nothing uh, when a police officer stopped him. As he tried, he stopped him from entering the building and said, why did you kill your girlfriend? And my friend, as best he could explain it to me, he was telling me this. And he just spilled his gut. He said he couldn't remember what he said who was told that his girlfriend had died in a fire and the matter was cleared. I mean, he was no... The reason they told him, this was a standard practice at the time. I don't know if they still do it. These things come in trends. Um, there was a, almost no chance this man, David, had intended to harm his girlfriend. The tactic was simply to accuse the, you know, boyfriend of killing her. Just said, why did you kill her? It, the tactic works. Uh, worked on a couple people I actually knew personally. One, another individual, his roommate died of a heroin overdose. He, when he came to his apartment, his roommate had died. The police were there, and a police officer said, "Why did you kill your roommate?" The guy cracked immediately, 
admitted to being a heroin user, was not arrested. Uh, he was arrested for nothing. He was paranoid after that, of course. You know, but his friend had died of an overdose, and, you know, he was a nice... These are two people I liked, actually. One of them died, died in an apartment of heroin. Uh, I did not meet that girlfriend that trust fund pizza box death uh, person. Never met her. My friend told me about her. I never met her. It was a love tragedy. I mean, you know, who knows? Who knows? I mean, if they, had they not met things, she might they, she might still be alive. He might still. He drank himself to death. Maybe a decade inside of a decade after that. I don't believe it was a direct correlation. I think his alcoholism and disabilities and social issues, mental problems. He he had been a patient at Western Psych a number of times, and he was you know perhaps in treatment. Or I, he may have begun, there may have been entitled to vocational rehabilitation in Pittsburgh. Oh, uh, it's possible. I, I forget it's conceivable his options were better in Pittsburgh than elsewhere for an individual with both mental and physical disabilities. Alcohol, well, alcoholism, for God's sakes. <laughs> that works great. That works the same equally everywhere. His mother was a major sick alky. These people were a case. Anyway, so were his friends. Some of his friends from there who knew each other. There was a connection. I didn't understand this crap to save my life. Oh, my God. This guy's... Okay, the guy who drank himself to death, his brother, was a physician, a pediatrician, I believe. He had one hand, one of his hands, had, the other hand had been burned off picking up an elect, electric wire as a child. And he later became you know, an adult physician. I met him, he was a likable person, very troubled, catastrophic family. He had turned both new Mark R., I won't say the last name, drug dealer was mugged. He was followed to his drug... He kept an apartment as a drug stash. Operator is Jewish. He had people in Israel, so he claimed I believe him. I don't believe he was Mossad. He was too fucked up, but he was as sneaky as a Mossad agent. He was really a duplicitous piece of work. A manipulator. There was that episode of... Is this running good? No, one time I bought an eighth of weed that's a tiny amount, no, a very small amount of weed from this asshole. I liked him. I liked the guy. He didn't mean an asshole, but he was an asshole. He insisted I'd give me a ride home as driving a sensible car. I knew it was stupid to say yes. I I could have taken the bus or walked. No, I could have walked, whatever. Or busted. But he insisted I'd give me a ride, which was ridiculous. This guy was, you know, a bad person. He buzzed me all over manipulator. He just buzzed me all over town. She would just say, let's go somewhere or we got to stop here. And he'd stop somewhere and go all the way over to the, a different side. This was all over town. After the fact, I realized we kept, the reason we kept stopping at parties, he was selling drugs at parties. Better yet, I realized later, she had been bugged. He wanted me with me. He was just simply taking me. See, he said he was going to give me a ride home. He eventually did, I think. But man, the reason he did it was to take it so that it looked like somebody was with him. Actually, if somebody attacked him, I would have been in a fight, same as him. <laughs> I would have been at a party in a fight. Anyhow, and that didn't happen. We just did a party circuit in his car. He sold drugs all over town. I was used as a body, a fake, bogus body bodyguard. And taken home. That was the end of that story. There was a devious motherfucker, Mark, what's his name, R. And uh, he, he was living with a nurse. He was a great lay, so I heard from, from my buddy. Story had it, he was, he was just, he could fuck all day, every day. And he was with this nursing maniac who just loved being fucked. <laughs> So he had the use of this woman's apartment, probably her car. He was a drug dealer, had the use of her car. Much an operator. He had, 
He's a sociopath with a sort of twitch in his face. He's sort of like a remorseless manipulator. Something was wrong with his heart. He was a badminton champion. He was an athlete with a heart defect. He died. It's believed he coked himself to death deliberately. I, at 35, he was rational and ruthless enough to understand his options were very bad or he was in serious trouble. He may have, it was rumored, my buddy was still going for a couple of years after Mark went, and uh, there were several conversations and speculations. I mean, I bought drugs, weed, just only marijuana, but uh, Mark would sell anything. He was a sociopath. He was selling small amounts of marijuana and had his own stash. He had a stash apartment that was robbed. He was picked up by the neck. Someone put a gun to his head and made him let them in and steal his stash. That's why he was using me as a fake bodyguard. Nice guy. What a user is. Manipulative. Ass bag. He's gone, coked himself to death, most likely. De facto heart. Consensus is he intended to die, you know, committed suicide. He was the type to commit suicide in a hedonistic way. Oh, Merrill, I never used cocaine. He was one of those people who would use cocaine strategically, selling it, preying upon an addiction, manipulating people by way of their addiction to it. Marijuana, cocaine, you know, whatever, you know, sex, anything, just anything. If he was bisexual... Oh, there was that story. There was an abundance of stories. He'd stay at Dave's house, my buddy's apartment, and he said company came over. This was confirmed well known. He, he was known to jerk off. He, if he was jerking off in the living room with lubricant, a, a magazine, at somebody else's apartment, and they come, people came up to the apartment, Let's say they just walked in while he was masturbating in the living room. He would say something like, want a soda? There's, he would say, like, there's sodas and beer in the fridge. And, I mean, he didn't miss a stroke. Thanks for listening.